At Titan's stable temperatures of minus 180 degrees Celsius, Titan not only has liquid methane on its surface, it also has methane in a gas form in the atmosphere. Liquid methane takes up about 1% of the surface area of Titan. Most of it is concentrated at the North Pole, while at the same time, methane forms the clouds in Titan's lower atmosphere. In the distant past, however, the temperatures of Titan were quite possibly even lower due to a few factors. Low enough such that nitrogen could have achieved a balance, where it was liquid on the surface, forming massive lakes, while at the same time being the main gas component of the atmosphere. Near Titan's surface, methane takes up about 5% of the atmospheric composition, while the rest, 95%, is nitrogen. The atmosphere on Earth, in comparison, is about 80% nitrogen. The atmospheric pressure near the surface of Titan is 1.5 bars, similar to Earth's 1 bar of pressure at the surface. The temperature on Titan is minus 180 degrees Celsius. This was confirmed by the instruments on the Hygens lander, which landed back in 2005. The spacecraft data from Cassini also confirmed these findings. In fact, it was found by Cassini using the infrared instrument that surprisingly the temperatures on Titan are very similar throughout the surface, varying only by a couple of degrees between the poles and the equator. Despite this extreme stability of Titan's surface temperatures, that doesn't mean that it was always the same. Quite possibly, it was colder in the distant past. There are many things that could have contributed to Titan being colder and that is going to be looked into later in this video. Nitrogen at 1 bar on Earth melts at minus 210 degrees Celsius, and it boils at minus 196 degrees Celsius. Because of the similar atmospheric pressure between Earth and Titan, that also means that the boiling and melting points of nitrogen are also similar. So all that needed to happen in the past for Titan to have liquid nitrogen lakes was that over its vast 4.5 billion year lifespan, the temperatures at some point needed to be very approximately about minus 200 degrees Celsius, only about 20 degrees Celsius lower from the current minus 180 degrees Celsius. Besides the temperature condition, another condition that needs to be met is that Titan had to have at least a somewhat similar atmospheric pressure as it does now. Although nitrogen lakes do have a good possibility that they once existed on Titan, global nitrogen oceans don't have as good of a chance. In one of my videos, I calculated that if all of the atmosphere of Earth froze, if it was evenly distributed, then the frozen atmosphere would form only a 9 meter thick ice layer. Similar layer thickness would also be true if the atmosphere was magically turned into a liquid on a flat surface. The water ocean of Earth, on the other hand, covers 70% of the surface, but it is on average 3,500 meters deep. So basically there is a really tiny amount of atmosphere compared to how much water is on Earth. There is about 280 times more water on Earth in terms of kilograms compared to how much there is the atmosphere. The water ocean of Earth has a similar mass to that of Ioni, a major moon of Saturn 1,100 kilometers in diameter, while the mass of Earth's atmosphere is comparable to Hyperion, as they almost have the exact same mass. Hyperion is another moon of Saturn. And if we were to compare spheres, a sphere entirely made out of solid nitrogen, which represents Earth's atmosphere, would be 220 kilometers in diameter, while an entirely waterized sphere, which represents the Earth's ocean, would be 1,400 kilometers in diameter. Of course, these numbers are excluding any potential compressional effects. Considering that the atmosphere of Earth is 1 bar and Titan's is 1.5 bars at the surface, and considering that both are mostly nitrogen, that then also tells us that a global nitrogen ocean that covered every piece of land likely did not have as good of a chance at existing compared to just nitrogen lakes. Even if one-third of the nitrogen in the current atmosphere of Titan turned into liquid, even then a global ocean would be unable to form. 
although technically a liquid layer about 5 meters thick should be able to form if a third of the atmosphere turned into liquid, that could only be on a flat surface. In reality, because of Titan's topographical depressions and protrusions, what would happen is that all of that liquid nitrogen would flow into the various depressions throughout the moon, which means that nitrogen lakes would form and not a global ocean. There simply isn't enough nitrogen for that to happen. This is a topographic map of Titan made through the data obtained by NASA's Cassini spacecraft. The topographic map reveals where the depressions and protrusions are, so we can see where liquid nitrogen lakes would form on current Titan if it was cold enough. Although some regions with high altitude could also have lakes if there are local depressions walled off from the rest of the surface. Now Titan is highly geologically active, that is why it only has just a few craters. So at a distant point in the past, the topographic map of Titan probably looked a lot different. So the location of possible nitrogen lakes would also probably be different. The only way that a fully global nitrogen ocean would be possible on Titan in the past is if at some point the quantity on the surface was greater by very approximately 100 times or even somewhat more. And then only if the majority of that nitrogen turned into liquid would a global ocean form. So a global nitrogen ocean on Titan requires an absurd quantity of nitrogen. Even a non-global ocean similar to the one that Earth has, which takes up 70% of the surface, even that type of ocean would require a massive quantity of nitrogen on the surface of Titan in the past, at least in the range of tens of times greater than what Titan has now. Which means that although a non-global nitrogen ocean more likely existed than a fully global ocean, it still doesn't look too promising. Even if Titan in the past never had a nitrogen ocean, there are still likely out there planets and moons that have the right temperature and pressure such that they support global nitrogen oceans, possibly even some that are quite deep. There are so many planets and moons out there that such a thing seems to be inevitable. The low end estimate for the visible universe is that there are 46 trillion planets. This massive number implies that there are some really bizarre planets out there. So what could have plausibly contributed to Titan's surface temperatures being lower in the past such that they allowed for liquid nitrogen lakes to exist? Well for one, the sun was less luminous in the past. At about 4.5 billion years ago, shortly after it formed, it was about 75% of the luminosity of the sun today, and it slowly increased from that point onwards. All things being equal, likely this would have at least contributed to temperatures being lower by a few degrees 3 to 4 billion years ago. Further, what could have contributed to lower temperatures on Titan in the past was that Titan was likely a lot more reflective. All else being equal, more reflective bodies are colder than less reflective ones. The reason Titan could have been a lot more reflective is because there was a lot less time for the dark tholins to accumulate on the surface. Tholins are byproducts of carbon-based molecules like methane reacting with sunlight. Not only was there just less time for methane to turn into the darker tholins, but the methane abundance itself was probably almost non-existent. Because methane is a greenhouse gas, meaning overall it increases the temperature of the atmosphere, the lack of it in the past further could have contributed to the lower temperatures. The reason why methane was likely non-existent or barely existent in the atmosphere of Titan in the past is because if the current rate at which methane is converted into the darker tholins was constant or even somewhat similar throughout Titan's entire history, there would have been way more tholins on the surface than what is seen currently. This indicates that the abundance of methane in Titan's atmosphere is a relatively recent phenomenon. It was estimated that it started within the last 1 billion years. Now if all of the currently present methane on Titan suddenly disappeared, temperatures on Titan would get lower, likely just barely enough for the nitrogen to start turning into a liquid in colder regions like the poles. So considering that there was probably little to no methane in Titan's atmosphere before 1 billion years ago, and considering the slight temperature effect of the fainter sun, 
plus the significantly higher reflectivity of Titan due to no methane being converted into darker thorns, and also less time for them to accumulate. All of those things together suggest that Titan had low enough temperatures for liquid nitrogen 4 to 3 billion years ago. 4 to 3 billion years ago, temperature levels could have easily been low enough such that massive liquid nitrogen lakes not only formed in the generally colder regions, like the poles, but also at the equator as well. It is worth mentioning that the idea of nitrogen lakes on Titan isn't exactly new. That is because a study was released in 2014 titled Titan's Past and Future, 3D Modeling of a Pure Nitrogen Atmosphere and Geological Implications. This study went into detail with the possibility of nitrogen lakes on Titan in the past. It revealed that the nitrogen lakes were indeed very much possible in the past. So the indications point in the direction that Titan was colder in the distant past. Despite these indications, it is also possible that the temperatures were not low enough for nitrogen lakes. There are just less indications for that. However, one potential one could be the closer distance of Titan to Saturn in the past. That is implied by the fact that Titan is currently drifting away from Saturn at a rate of about 11 centimeters a year. Assuming a constant rate at which it moved away, that would mean that 4 billion years ago it was closer to Saturn by around 440,000 kilometers, so closer by a third of its current distance. This maybe could have caused greater heating coming from friction within the interior due to an increase in tidal forces. However, how much the closer distance would really have changed anything in terms of surface temperatures is very hard to say, especially when we have all other factors that worked towards the lower temperatures. Still, Titan is so old that there could have been both hotter and colder periods along with various pressure levels, so there was plenty of time along with opportunities for nitrogen lakes to form. Titan is highly geologically active. That is why its surface is relatively young, between 100 million to 1 billion years old. Out of the current large-scale terrain types, the newest one is the dark, organic-rich dune fields at the equator. The dune field layer sits on top of an older, plain layer, which is coated in organics to a varying degree. Then below the plain layer is the ancient water ice layer, likely the oldest terrain type. And although the water ice layer is typically below the plains and the sand dunes, in some areas it is actually on the top and is visible fully, such as in the Xanadu region. Considering the age of the surface and the relative age of the terrain types, the Xanadu region, which has the rigid ancient water ice exposed on the surface, potentially due to the water ice layer being the oldest layer, Xanadu also maybe has marks of very old nitrogen lakes or even rivers when it was cold and pressurized enough such that nitrogen lakes formed at the equator. Polar regions, maybe in some rigid water ice rich areas, hold the marks of the more recent nitrogen lakes. The more recent nitrogen lakes were probably there because temperatures are generally a bit lower on the poles, giving more room for nitrogen lakes to exist at likely atmospheric pressures. Hopefully the high geological activity of Titan didn't erase every trace of these nitrogen lakes, so that there is at least something left for Dragonflight to detect. Despite the current surface of Titan being between 100 million to 1 billion years old, Titan itself is 4.5 billion years old. We know that because the crater density of major neighboring moons indicates such an age. And we know that Titan is related to them because of them all orbiting around the equator of Saturn except for Iapetus. Still, all major moons of Saturn have a similar water to rock content ratio, so considering their similar orbital inclination along with a similar overall composition, those two things together only point towards the fact that they all formed out of the same matter that was floating about in a disk that was orbiting around the equator of early Saturn some 4.5 billion years ago. In fact, nearly all significant celestial bodies in the solar system formed about 4.5 billion years ago. 
so there was plenty of time for Titan to go through all sorts of different periods, including some during which there were possibly nitrogen lakes. <laughs> 